Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome as we are privileged to celebrate this Holy Eucharist on the 29th Sunday of Ordinary Time. As always, we take a moment to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass as we call to mind and acknowledge our sins. Let us ask for God's divine mercy. Lord Jesus, all your work is done in faithfulness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, all creation is full of your love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your grace is sufficient for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Of goodwill. We, we praise you, you. We, we bless you, you. we adore you, we, we glorify you, you. we give, give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, King. O oh God, God, Almighty Father, Father. Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity, if he gives his life as an offering for sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his affliction, he shall see the light in fullness of days. Through his suffering, my servant shall justify many, and their guilt he shall bear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Lord, let your mercy be on us as we place our trust in you. Upright is the word of the Lord, and all his works are trustworthy. He loves justice and right. Of the kindness of the Lord, the earth is full. Lord, Lord let your let mercy, mercy be on, on us as we, as we place, place our trust, trust in you. you. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Lord, Lord let, your, let mercy your mercy be on, be on us, us as, we as we place, place our, our trust, trust in you. <clears throat> our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May your kindness, O Lord, be upon us who have put our hope in you. Lord, Lord, let, let your, your mercy, mercy be on us as we, as we place our trust in you. <clears throat> A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Son of Man came to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. According to you, O Lord. 
James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do something to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered him, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. But with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the, t the other ten heard this, they became indignant at, G at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be that like that among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be, wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I think we all well know that rather integral to our human nature is competition. A spirit that drives us to want to be number one in a variety of different places and ways to earn the most, to achieve as much as we can, to be recognized for our achievements. That competition and how we measure our success or our advancement is something that we tend to learn at a very, very young age. And all aspects of our lives have their own different standards and measures for what that success means, certainly in the sports world, in our academics, in music, on stage, so many things that we can name that are a part of life. So there's a competitive spirit, and it a, can be a wonderful kind of thing. As we think about that competition, there is a definite competitive spirit that we hear in this morning's gospel when we meet James and John. And it is they who are having this rather direct or conversation with the Lord and asking the Lord to make them number one, make sure that in God's kingdom that they'll be in places of honor. Now, just a little bit of a context. We can think it was not too long before this morning's gospel event that Jesus had invited his disciples to go quietly to the mountain to pray. And there were three that when they got to the foot of the mount that he took to the top. It was James and John and Peter. But the rest, the Lord had said to them to stay behind, to stay at a lower place. But it was James and John and Peter who had this specialness, being able to experience Jesus' transfiguration. And so I wonder what those other nine disciples might have felt, that these three were picked out by the Lord amongst all of the twelve to have this very special experience. And so they, the nine, would learn kind of secondhand what that experience of Jesus' transfigure was when Jesus and those three gentlemen came back down the mountain. And it, it was interesting, too, that we know well that among all those disciples that Jesus singled out Peter to be the rock foundation for the church. And so we can also well just think, because it's not totally recorded, but that there might have been some kind of a competitive spirit. And so when we get to this, the event of this morning's gospel, when James and John ask for positions of the right and the left in Jesus' kingdom, that the others kind of maybe take them off, that they were arguing and they were upset about that kind of whole movement. But I can well imagine, just because it's part of our human nature to have that competitive spirit and to want to be singled out, to be want to be special, to want to make a difference, all of those kind of realities that can put us sometimes in conflict in our attitudes as well as in our relationships. 
Well, it's interesting in Jesus in the gospel this morning that Jesus doesn't berate James and John for their choices or the anger of the other disciples, but he addresses all of them together and presenting to them that different than much of our, our drive for competitiveness and much of an attitude and our understanding in, uh, in society then as well as today, that uh, the accomplishments and that competitive spirit is not to move us to just gain power and authority over other people, but to be servants. And so it's Jesus who sets the bar, the standard for, for God's understanding and God's life of what accomplishment really is all about and the direction for our ambitions, not to be competitive to the other who's better or how we lord our lives or, or we're, we're more faithful, we're more church or whatever, but how we, everything that we choose to do is found to be in service of God's kingdom. And we put ourselves in God's hand and we trust God to be able to lead us and to guide us into making God-like kind of decisions in all aspects of our lives and all of our interrelationships, all the things that we're involved in. And again, it, in our homes and dealing with our, our challenges of health and abilities and disabilities at work, at school, whatever we might be, that we're always, always looking to the Lord to guide us and direct us. What's the most loving thing to do? And what is that which is the greatest gift that will give honor and glory to God's kingdom, to develop God's kingdom? And it is that spirit of, of service and self-sacrificing love. And so it's really that living, that first reading that we hear about the suffering servant that Jesus literally poured out his life on the cross to save us, to give of ultimate service for all of us. We remember the image of later on after as we move through the church here of the Last Supper when Jesus washes the feet of his disciples and says, as I have done, so also you must do. And so that's a consistent theme that we may continually be taught by the master of what is accomplishment all about in God's eyes. Not sometimes different than in our world's eyes or maybe in our own motivation and our own drives. And it's always that the Lord who is calling us to just go deeper in our faith and trust of our God and how we are called to look at each other as real equals and how we are not just competitive about who's better or who does God love more or whatever, but how we are of service of God's kingdom. And so the, the gospel this morning began by Jesus saying, well, what do you want me to do to, for you? As he was responding to James and John, maybe a great part of our daily prayer is Lord God, what do you want me to do for you as your disciple, as your child in building and supporting the goodness of your kingdom? What do you, Lord God, want me to do for you right now in whatever I'm experiencing or about in my daily life? And trust that God will flood us with grace, will lead us, will, get, will guide us. And so we profess the great faith of the church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Amen. Amen. As a community called to love and to love and service, let us approach the Lord with these our petitions. That as preachers of the gospel, Pope Francis, Bishop Morlino, and all those who serve as ministers of faith will do so with vigor and make known the call of all to new life, to God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those with authority over the lives of others will exercise that authority with integrity, justice, and be individuals who serve rather than be served. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That each of us may have the grace and faith to know through the words and life of Jesus to be of service to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are experiencing the weaknesses and challenges of life by illnesses, disabilities, or nearing the end of their earthly life, that they know and believe that Jesus is with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Marsha Hilgendorf, who we remember at this Mass, and all who have died through the mercy and grace of Jesus, may enter into eternal life with him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Trusting in God's love, let us now offer to him the prayers of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy, you call us to live as your son lived in service of out for others. Hear our prayers voiced in his name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of the Lord, come to share in divinity of Christ, to humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace, we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Amen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ. We may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity that to, and together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And please minister his word of peace to, to those who may be near you. Peace be with you, Jeff. Peace be with you. Thank you. Peace be with you, Christian. Thank you. Peace be with you, Renee. Thank you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not, not worthy that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, roof but, but only say the word, word and my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. Body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Yeah. The body of Christ. <laughs> Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age and be prepared for the gifts that are eternal. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. As our Mass has ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
We thank you for taking the time this morning to join us in this Eucharistic celebration presided over by Monsignor Larry Bakke, the director of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison and pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe. I am Jeff Bond, a candidate for the permanent diaconate of the Diocese of Madison. My sons, Christian and Rene Bond, were our acolytes. As members of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish in Monona, we feel blessed to be a part of this important ministry of the Apostolate. Our music ministry was provided by Ray Tanko, a member of St. Thomas Aquinas Parish in Madison. By the interpretation of Nancy Halada and closed captioning provided by the Apostolate, our deaf brothers and sisters in Christ were able to share with us in worship this morning. It is through the generosity, public service, and social concern of the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV for persons of all faiths with disabilities that we are able to bring this time of faith, word, and Eucharist to you. Now some great news. We are pleased to announce that the annual Advent Christmas party will be held on Saturday, December 1st at the Monroe High School. Information on making a registration will be shared during the broadcast of next Sunday's TV Mass. Mark December 1st on your calendar now. Make it a beautiful week, and may you always know the love, justice, and kindness of the Lord in your life. <laughs>